Hey guys, Jonas here. Aerial shots from drones can really help build a cool sequence, don't you think? The thing is though that none of the shots that you just saw came from a drone or a helicopter. In fact, they didn't even cost me anything to make. Google Earth. Definitely a resource that I think is often forgotten when it comes to adding aerial effects to your videos. And today's video is going to be two quick tips on how you can use Google Earth. Uh, and I think both of these two tips are things that most people will find useful at least at some point when editing their videos. Uh, first one is going to be kind of like what we just saw, adding drone-like passes over areas of interest on a map. And then the second one is going to be a zoom in onto a location on the map from space. All right, let's dig into it. First one, drone-like passes. Let's first take a step back and look at the program. There are two versions, one online version and one downloadable pro version. Both are free, so you're good there but I prefer the downloadable pro version. It gives me some valuable possibilities for what we're doing here and it works really well. In the sidebar, I only have 3D buildings and terrain checked. I don't want any other text information or borders and stuff like that. In the preferences up here, we make sure to have anti-aliasing checked, medium or high, and this reduces some of the sharp edges on objects. Also make sure to have these two boxes checked, use high quality terrain and use 3D imagery. Better quality video clips that way. The photorealistic option here will give you kind of a hazy look to the atmosphere. Looks good sometimes, but I'm not always a fan of this. I prefer to do some basic color grading to the clips instead myself. Now you're also going to need a way to do screen records. I'm using a program called Viking Recorder. Gotta stay true to where I'm from, right? but there are plenty of great screen recording programs to choose from. Something to think about though, is that the better resolution you have on your screen, your monitor, the better quality clips you will end up with. If I, for example, screen record the full screen on my laptop, I end up with clips with a resolution of 3,360 pixels by 2,100 pixels. So if my video export is HD, full HD, 1920 by 1080, I do have quite a lot to play with if I stretch and modify my clips. So that's pretty good. Also, Google Earth is a program with a lot of information that needs to be processed. So you will need a pretty good computer with a pretty good internet speed to do this. All right, so let's look at how to actually do this. First, you go up to the search bar. I'm going to check out Singapore. A pin appear on my search point but I can remove it by hitting the X up here. And now we can zoom in, move around and pan the camera whichever way we want. And since we are screen recording, I wanna minimize the unwanted stuff up on the screen. So if you have all of the controls up here on your right, whenever you bring the cursor up there and start moving the things around, those things are gonna appear. And also the cursor in itself is going to be in the way. So whenever you have your shot set up, I recommend using the arrows to move. Left, right, up, down, that kind of stuff. Also, if you press the command key on a Mac, you will change the tilt of the camera. So command and then arrows up and down will change the tilt. And if you hold down the alt option key while moving with the arrows, it will slow down the movement, which is really handy for our smooth drone-like passes. All right, let's just do a move and then screen record this and take a look at what it looks like. So I'm gonna tilt the camera down and do a pass over these skyscrapers and I'm gonna hold down the Alt Option key and use my up and down and left and right arrows. So one thing that I do have to mention really early on though, that is, this is a Google uh, product and it's written in the agreement for Google Earth that you are technically not allowed to remove the Google Earth logo. You have to be able to display that this is from Google Earth. Uh, I just have to mention it, that it is written in there somewhere that you shouldn't do that. So uh, I'm handing it off to you guys to do whatever you want, but I've said it and I've warned you, okay? Now let's talk about some limitations with this because there's obviously limitations. I mean, we are looking at satellite images uh, and the resolution is not gonna be as good as if you were to film with your drone. Also, there's not gonna be any movement in the shots. We're looking at still images, people, cars, boats, water, Anything that moves is obviously going to be like frozen. It's not going to, it's going to be still. So you got to think about this before you use it. You can't do all of the shots that you would do with a drone, of course. If you go too close to a street, uh, if you are in an area where there would be, usually be a lot of movement, that's going to give it away. But one of the type of shots that I really think works here are the straight down shots. Stuff like uh, flying over a city with the skyscrapers giving that three dimensional 
feel of a city. Uh, shots like this are really difficult to shoot in real life. Technically, you're not allowed to fly your drone over a bunch of skyscrapers uh, in, a, in the middle of a big city. And many cities don't allow you to fly drones at all. Um, so here is an option for you to actually get some of those shots that you normally wouldn't be allowed to get. Yes, the resolution is not going to be as great. And uh, yes, there are going to be other limitations to it. Um, but still, I mean, you have something that you can work with. Depending on your film, depending on your video, I think a lot of times this could be really useful. Okay, so on to our second quick tip using Google Earth, and that is zooming into a location on a map from space. And this here is one way to do it. Let's check it out. Either search for the location like before, or zoom into the location you want to fly to. I'm going to work on a video about the Peruvian Amazon, so I want to go somewhere around here. Then go up to Edit and select Copy View Location. Now paste this into the search bar and this will fly you to that location. But again, we don't want that yellow pushpin in our shot, so delete that with the X. Now you can zoom out to a position that you want as your starting position for the clip. You can go sideways as well, so you kind of pan over the continent. You can go as far out into space as you wish, and then hit the history button up here in the sidebar, and double click your last position. And there you go, you will fly in without the pushpin. And then when you have your clip, bring it into the video editing software and you can get really fancy and play with adding additional effects like clouds and all kinds of stuff like that. For these clouds, I used Final Cut Pro's own cloud background that you can find under the Generators tab. I modified the color and contrast a little and then I exported just this segment as an individual clip. And this is something you have to do in order to be able to change the speed. I want to really speed this up to match my zoom in. All right, I took my clip added it to my zoom in clip, sped it up, and then I went to blend modes and switched to screen. I also dropped the opacity, and then I also added a Gaussian blur to the layer. And this is to make everything look a little bit softer. I then faded the beginning and the end of the clip with a cross dissolve. Really simple way and all for free. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that tutorial on a couple of ways that you can use Google Earth in your videos. I wanna give a big shout out to all of our supporters through Patreon. We really appreciate your help, uh, really helpful. And thanks everyone else for watching the video. Stay tuned for the video coming out next week.